Welcome back everyone. Thanks again for joining Tankers Fantasy Football here. We're going to give you some wide receiver rankings and once again we're going to do a part one, a part two. So today we'll kick it off with the AFC receivers and we kind of touched on it last week but we're going to talk about maybe doing a fan league here for all the Tankers viewers out there. Yeah we got three people interested. We got and uh, we just want to get it to 12. I mean, we'd be settled for 10, but we'd like to get it to a 12-team PPR. So uh, message us, or yeah, message us below, or email us at tankersfantasyfootball uh, at gmail.com, and we will get you in there. We got three already down. I forgot to mention mention it to the last uh, video to the very end. So that was like 55 minutes in. So you don't get very many people hanging out with you 55 minutes in, but. Yeah, well, you're welcome to join. You get to win a uh, Tankers uh, jersey. Tankers jersey with Tankers on the front and then one your name of your choice and number on the back. Six pack of koozies. Six pack of them Tankers koozies. And what else are we giving? We're giving them a, give them a shit gun? Signed and everything. Oh, I mean, I know um, our Tankers don't mean dick all, but we will sign this very shit gun. We will send you this shit gun and we will get, I'll get myself a fucking new shit gun. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go on from there, but we're going to hit you with some, uh, <laughs> some wide receiver ranks today and start you with some AFC. And I think AFC, I think there's clear cut number one guy. It's a got to be Antonio Brown. Absolutely has to be. I mean, I know he had still over three, well over 300 uh, PPR points for you last year, but he did fall off a little bit. He had his least amount of fantasy points since 2012. And he only had four games over 100 yards last year, which is his least amount of games over 100 yards since 2012. Same with receptions and yards on the season there. But I don't think it's a sign that you should be worried about. I think it's, I mean, he still put up very nice numbers for it. I think he's still going to be a top five receiver when it's all said and done. And I think if there's any guy who's going to go out and get you 120 plus catches for 1,500 yards and 10 touchdowns, it's got to be this guy. I mean, he's still, you know, the lord of consistency. He had 11 games last year, over 15.6 points or better in PPR. In eight games, he had 21 and a half or better. I mean, that's still very sexy. It's very getting it done. And one guy that I really think is not getting as much love as what he has in the past is A.J. Green. And we were really high on him last year. And if he would have played 16 games, this guy would have had, what, 117 catches, 1,700 yards. This guy would have been grinding out there for you. And really, his only competition coming in is a rookie. Yeah, I mean, he really only got those nine games last year because he went down early in Buffalo. He had a target, which he got injured on that target. Didn't have any reception, so we're saying he only played the nine games. And those nine games, we, we're talking about he averaged 107 yards a game in those nine games. I mean, that's godlike action right there. And I know he only had four touchdowns at that span, but his last three full seasons that he's played, they've all been double-digit touchdowns. I, uh, you got to think those touchdowns at least get to eight or nine on the season. I mean, if he stays healthy, I'm saying no way. Now he's got to be over 1,500 yards. Anything saying easily over 1,400. Give me the 1,500. And I'm saying for the first time in his career, he gets, the, gets that 100 gets that 100 receptions if he plays all 16. I don't think there's any reason. I mean, think about it. It shakes down. There's no reason why A.J. Green couldn't end as the number one overall wide receiver this year. I, I don't see why he couldn't. But I mean... It can happen. No, no. I mean, he's getting he's been sliding some of these drafts into the second round. If that's the case, if you're looking at like say a Jordy and AJ Green leading off that team around the turn. Oh, that's golden. I'm in love with it. I mean, you know, you got guys going in front of him like Mike Evans, Odell Beckham Jr. and Julio. And I know those are great guys, they're wonderful guys, but I mean, you know, who's to say AJ can't outproduce those guys? So where he's going in drafts at the very end of the first and maybe into that first two or three picks of the second I think AJ Green is right up there with those top two three wide receivers yeah I think if any of those guys I almost like AJ Green over backs like Melvin Gordon LaShawn McCoy and Freeman 
Yeah, I think that injury was more of a freak thing. They say he's even looking real good out there in practice, looking more manly, got a little more, maybe a little more beef on him. And I think this might be AJ Green's best season of his career this season. I'm all in on it. All right, two guys we're gonna hit on. And I think these guys are kind of interchangeable to you like more. At the end of the season, I think they're going to have about the same amount of points. But for the sake of consistency, we're giving the nod to our boy T.Y. Hilton. Yeah, I think you got to give it to T.Y. for consistency. He had the 91 grabs for over 1,400 yards. And yeah, you're only, the, you're only the six touchdowns, but I'm saying that's probably his floor in touchdowns. I think he might get back to that eight, nine, maybe even ten I mean, range for you. I think he's had seven touchdowns twice in his career, and that's been the cap on him. He's like very consistent, five to seven touchdowns every year. I just don't know with the healthy Moncrief if he plays the full season if he's going to get you that 91 catches for nearly 1,500 again. I mean, the guy had six games over 100 yards, which was the most be, be only behind Julio on the season. I mean, we said earlier uh, who, Antonio Brown only had four games over 100 yards. You know, T.Y. had six, and he had 10 games over 80 yards receiving. I mean, my goodness. And the guy we're giving him the slight edge over is we're going Brandon Cooks next. And I know, you know, he's playing with Tom Brady, but really going from Drew Brees to Tom Brady isn't too much of a slide. No. I mean, who's, I mean, the, the, I mean, the, the, the Saints are, you know, attempting more pass plays than the, than the Patriots are anyway. I mean, they're the ones playing from behind more in the second half. And I just don't know. I mean, this guy, I mean, he had really three, I mean, prime, super diesel, super <laughs> diesel, sexy boy games. And he had what? What do you have? 502 yards in those three games? Well, how many yards did he have on the season? I mean, this guy of what? In 502 in three games, he had not even 1,200 on the season. So in those other 13 games, we're talking 670 yards. 670 yards in the other 13 games. That's that's only 51 yards a game in the other 13 games. And in those three games, he loved just sexy for those 502 yards. But I mean, I mean, he was averaging. That was almost half his total. In those three games, he averaged about 35 PPR points. In the other 13 games, he was looking at 11 for you. Just, just a shade above 11. It was 11.1 .1 for you out there. I mean, my goodness. And like we said, I mean, he's going to get, you know, 8 to 9 touchdowns or whatever, but I still think that he's going to be inconsistent, even with New England there. I think he's going to be a play where he's going to win you the league, or win you that week hand down, but he's also going to drop some, you know, 5s and 8s in there. Yeah, I mean, if you're looking for 15, 16 points a week, you know, I think you gotta, I think you gotta give the nod to Ty. There's a lot of mouths to feed out there in New England. I mean, if Gronk's you, healthy. Yeah. Edelman's gonna do his thing. Malcolm Mitchell is coming into his own. Sure. Edelman. I mean, people forget about Edelman, but you know, Edelman's gonna catch 90 balls. He is. I mean, I mean, this I mean, is James White and Deion Lewis going to get in there some too. I mean, I think the Patriots are more kind of a run, trying to see what we got going on on first and second down with the run. You know, I think they're more about I mean, that kind of game plan. They're going to be doing a lot of winning, so therefore I think it's going to yeah. be a lot of Gillisley since James, since uh, LeGarrette Blunt's out now. As far so. as the average draft position goes, I mean, I think you got to, I mean, I just don't, I just don't know if Cooks is your boy, is the boy this season. I mean, if he's, he can be a guy who can totally win your league, but... Some people are getting crazy on him, drafting him above dudes like Jordy. Oh, my goodness. I mean, that's just... Yeah, ungodly. right around the turn between the first and the second. And like I said, I don't think you got to take Michael get, Thomas, the guy who... The, you got to take Thomas Jordy. Over. You got to take Michael Thomas. I think you have to take T.Y. over him. Yeah, for sure. All right, we're giving the nod do at oh, five. Oh man, Boogans up in there. Boogans. These receivers dude. in the AFC, I feel like you either get extremely bland guys, or you get flat out boom or bust. And you know, with the fourth AFC wide receiver that we're going to talk about, or no, the fifth, yeah. the fifth AFC wide receiver, I think we're going to go with Tyreek Hill. I think you gotta. I mean, we're talking about pure upside. We're talking about Macklin just left town. What is the only wide receiver two in Kansas City? Is who? Chris Conley? 
Oh. Oh. Oh, God. I mean, Travis Kelsey is clearly the, you know, the 1A, 1B situation. He's probably, Kelsey's probably 1A. Tyreek Hill's more a little 1B. But, but Tyreek Hill, Hill was getting the ball in the backfield, too. He had 11 total touchdowns on the season. I mean, this guy only had, they only said he, what, played 40 snaps in only one game? Over 40 snaps in only one game? I mean, my goodness! And you only on the, this is gonna this is for those Amari Cooper lovers sticking him a little bit. Tyreek Hill only had only 11 less PPR points than Amari Cooper. Don't do it, Buggin' Duggins. Oh, we got full screen bugs. Sorry. Oh no. Oh no. Run it. Run it. All right. Bet, bet. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I mean, Tyreek Hill when he started actually like playing football and we're still, you know, like I said, only 40 snaps once. So we're talking about not really playing that much football. We're talking about probably playing half the snaps. This guy went from week eight and on. This guy averaged 15 PPR for you. I mean, this guy, I really, he's gonna be the only truly wide receiver out there. Like we said, Kelsey's gonna do his thing. I mean, the running back situation is. It's pretty sketchy. Tyreek Hill is going to play some running back back there. Great. I think he is going to be a very, very, very solid wide receiver, too, with some serious wide receiver one upside. Ain't no fucking, ain't no only playing 40 snaps this year. He's no, going to be out there play, every play. Yeah, every single play is going to be out there. And, and if he, you get a little love and some, maybe some return touchdowns, he had two punt returns. I know they're talking about taking him off the kickoffs, but I think they're still going to be leaving him on them punts where he is very electric. What are we moving to? We're going to give it to an old dirty, old hope for comeback. But yeah, We're going to uh, give a guy who was going top five last year, and now he's looking somewhere in the third round. He's, uh, he was a fantasy killer last year. If you he weren't able did. to get a late round flyer or a good guy off the waiver wire, DeAndre Hopkins could have single-handedly tanked your season. This guy only had two games over 100 yards. Oh. He had less than 200 PPR points oh. when he had like 315. Like the we're year talking before. about bottom end wide receiver three, borderline wide receiver four numbers in even 12 team leagues. That's got awful. <laughs> he had one game over 20. One. Todd Gurley had the one game over 20. He took him two, two touchdowns, but one 20 point game. He only had, what, one touchdown after week five for you? Yeah, you know, we started off, you know, we got you a little, you know, we got 16.4, then 24.3 weeks one and two. You know, we got you pretty. You're feeling like, good about you know, that. All top right, five you know, pick. that's fine, that's fine. He's got it going on, and then, oh my fuck. <laughs> He just goes out there and totally shits on you. He gets single digits in PPR. Not in standard, talking single digits in PPR in five of the next seven games. Yeah, this uh, is a guy we're talking last year didn't see, like, single digit targets uh, until, like, I don't even know. It was, like, week 13. Like, yeah, this guy is I don't getting, even know why we're ranking him here. I mean, we're dumping all over him. I feel like, I mean, we are, but I feel like it can't get any worse. And, I mean, Brock Osweiler obviously was not a great play. I don't know how I Tom think, Savage is going to be, but I feel like if you're Savage on was forcing hold, him the ball, though, when he had the opportunity. I mean, that was a problem with Brock. He was like he only throw it to a guy when he was like open by five yards, and that's not the score when you're getting double teamed every play. So you just gotta force feed these guys the ball. And I think I mean Savage. I mean you know Savage is maybe even the hit man. I mean, say, I mean just as good. Who knows? I mean, I mean he can't, be, can't really be worse. Yeah, I, I mean my like. goodness. But I mean if even if he's looking to force feed the ball on the sideline, I mean even in the red zone, I think you gotta hope and pray. He can get back up over those thousand yards into that twelve hundred yard range and just get mm. those touchdowns. Get the up. touchdowns. Only four last year on the whole season. You got to double down. I mean, if he can't get to eight or nine, I mean, I don't I, know. It I might be like another. It's going to be another lost season from where his ADP is still early to late, early third, late second. Yeah, yeah. He's been going consistent third round at worst in a lot of these mocks. All right, let's talk about. We talked about Cooper a little bit there. Cooper. But we're going to rank the real hero. The real hero. We're going to give Crabtree the slight one position edge over Cooper, and I'll Go tell you why. All in his chain. <laughs> Up in his rank. Oh, in his rank. Crabtree's outscored him. 
PPR both back to back years. I mean, I know Cooper's on the rise, but who's to say that Crabtree's not really necessarily on the demise? I don't think he's, he's not going a, anywhere. He's not old and dusty out there. He's still grinding hard. And this is where it just kicks him in the pants. I mean, this is just kick Cooper, kick those Cooper lovers right in the pants. Yeah, the shorts, I mean, we're talking red zone production. We're talking red zone targets. 21 targets to Crabtree. 13 to Cooper. But, you know, you're like, oh, you know, maybe he'll up to. We're talking about six red zone touchdowns for Crabtree. How many Cooper converted those 13 targets into the, in the red zone into touchdowns? Absolutely none of them. None. We're talking six to zero in the red zone Fucking. touchdowns. We're talking <laughs> Seth Roberts. Seth. Had more Freaking Roberts. red zone Maybe. targets than Amari Cooper. Seth Roberts. How does it happen mm. out there? 20. 20. Tar I mean, almost had as many red zone targets as Crabtree did. No, I didn't did say draft Seth Roberts no, by any means. No, no, <laughs> <laughs> Don't. But I'm saying if you got a choice and you're thinking, you know, it's the late second, I'm going to get Amari Cooper, pass on Amari Cooper and get Crabtree coming back in the late four. Oh, I mean, that's why I would also reason why we're giving the nod to Crabtree here is because he's like a full two rounds average draft position later in these 12 team PPR mocks that we're always doing. And I think you got, I just drafted him in the last PP, 12 team PPR mock we did in that late, what, second to last pick in the fourth round I got Crabtree. He's been going, yeah, he's going right around the turn between the four and the fifth, a full two rounds later than Cooper. I know you got Derek Carr saying Cooper looks like the dog so out you there got, being you, his boy, but Crabtree's value when I feel oh. like it's going to be the same thing at the end of the year. Oh, it's ridiculous. You, you know, you're picking in the first three, so you're going to get one of those sexy boy running backs. You're telling me if you don't go wide receiver, wide receiver, wide receiver in the next three rounds, that Crabtree is your wide receiver three isn't absolutely love me sexy. I mean, if you're, you're out of your damn mind. I mean, you could be looking at guys like, you could be looking at Le'Veon Bell. You could be looking at, like, Brandon Cooks, like we said. You're going to be looking... Doug Baldwin, and then you get in Crabtree I mean, as your third wide receiver out there. That's pretty stout. Oh, loving me. Thanks. All right, we have another bounce back guy. And I feel like I'm feeling the more bounce back on this guy more than you. Here. Yeah, I don't I've, know. I mean, I've got some faith in you, Allen Robinson. You hurt my feelings. Here. I mean, obviously, <laughs> two years ago, he had 14 touchdowns, 1,400 yards. He did almost have as many catches, surprisingly, was last year as he did the year before, but the explosive plays weren't there. Bortles really wasn't connecting on him. But fixing some of Bortles' mechanics, which I think Allen Robinson's production all rides on the shoulder of Blake Bortles there. And I just, I'm feeling the bounce back here for him. I mean, it can't really get much worse. I mean, look at the dip in production from 2015 and 2016. I mean, it is embarrassing. And we went, I mean, 80 receptions to 73 receptions isn't what we're talking about here. We're talking about 1,400 yards to 880 yards. Talking about 14 touchdowns to six touchdowns. But they had, uh, I think it's Nate Hackett, I think, their offensive coordinator with the bucket hat out there. They tried him out last two games. He had like 14 catches. In the last two games, and averaged over 100 yards. I'm just afraid. I mean, you know, defense has to be there for him. But I'm just afraid that the Jaguars are going to go all, all in run. with this running back, with this running game situation. They've they got, drafted a fullback. They drafted. They went probably the best running back in the draft. They get possibly the best run blocking tackle in the draft in Cam Robinson, and then they triple down and get the fullback in like the seventh round. I think they're going all they've in. They've got I mean they got a top know. five talented defense. If they want to run the ball and shorten the games, take the ball out of Bortles' hands, I'm all in on it if they want to win games. But I don't know. I oh, still, I think I we're going like to see running on first down, I mean, 80% of the time, at least to start the season from the Jacksonville Jaguars. I just don't – I still think Allen Robinson has a very, very nice ceiling that can be reached at this point. Yeah. I mean, and he's going like 
late third late to fourth third, round. Yeah. So I mean that's not awful. If I he's mean we're talking second, about we're talking receiver. about Trail Pryor. We're talking about Allen Robinson. I'm talking give me Trail Pryor. I don't give I don't give I, mean, I don't give a damn. I think Trail Pryor is locked in as a top ten oh, wide receiver. I love him. <laughs> All right, we talked about Crabtree and Cooper kind of being a duo that might be pretty similar at the end of the year. We're going to talk about Demarius Thomas, D-Train, and Emmanuel Sanders. And once again, I think they're both very, very good value. D-Train's slipping. He's down to that early first three, four picks in the fourth round of these 12-team mocks. I mean, he's slipping. He's going after a lot of guys. I mean, Tyreek Hill... Like we talked about earlier on, it's consistently going. I mean, we're loving on Tyree Kill, but he's consistently going over D Train in every mock out there. And I mean, I don't know. D Train in the fourth? I don't know. I mean, I think I'm more in love with Sanders out there. And like, what is he going sixth or I mean, sixth or he's seventh going round? Sixth or seventh round. I feel like Sanders is a higher ceiling. But D-Train is so consistent, it's dumb out there. Every single week, you look five to six catches, and he's going to get you over 1,000 yards, and he's going to get you seven, eight touchdowns. But like we said, at the end of the year, they're going to have roughly the same numbers. I'm falling out so of why love with D-Train. So why not get a guy you can get three to four rounds later in a Sanders? I'm in love with the... Manuel Sanders. I mean, if you're looking to go running back heavy early on in drafts and you're looking to get a solid wide receiver three, I mean, possibly even if you're looking to hold up and I mean, decent, he's going to be, I think he's going to put up decent, I mean, at least back in wide receiver two numbers. Yeah, I think, I, I don't see why he couldn't. All right, one guy, a PPR machine out there, and my machine, I mean, catches and that's it. <laughs> Devar, Jarvis Landry, I mean, he, I mean, he is undeniable out there. Like we said yeah, in the mock man. drafts, him and Odell Beckham have the most reception in their first three years in the league of all time. And I mean, my goodness, how I mean, we're ranking him pretty low. And I think of I, I think I'd go Landry over D Train. I don't love it. Tell it. <laughs> he's not, <laughs> he's not going to get you touchdowns. And they're saying that. Devontae Parker is actually coming into his own yeah, this year. Yeah, they say. Well, they say that last year, yeah. too. And, you know, Landry. I like Parker. I mean, he has flashes of greatness, but I'm just. He does. But Landry is, I mean, he's like, if he's your third wide receiver, he's your flex play. I feel like that's a guy that you're going to get, you know, your consistent 13 points out of every week that you can count yeah. on. Yeah, I'm all in on it. We got Martavis Bryant, you know. I mean, Martavis Bryant can quit smoking. Snorting, snorting, token, sucking, popping. I mean, <laughs> if he can quit doing all those things, I think he's a legitimate. He, I mean, reports look wide say he's looking two. sexy. Yeah. I mean, my goodness, he could be high end wide receiver too. And he's going at what the fourth, maybe fifth round. I mean, we saw him go crazy we in like the early him, third. Yeah, the highest I've seen him is go third, but he's been going That's, about the fourth to fifth round. Sometimes even as low as the sixth. Yeah, I mean, you know, if he if he if he, if he preseason goes on, and he's making those big plays in weeks two and three of preseason, your drafts after that, I mean, his stock's gonna absolutely, it's gonna skyrocket. I mean, this guy was getting drafted in like the seventh round a I mean, couple years ago, and he was suspended for four games. I mean, so that guy, sixteen games. That guy is a believer in that early third round, but if he does it and he shows up and he's looking sexy, I think that's gonna be his ADP. Come late August. Yeah, like we said, he was suspended for four games a couple of years ago. And he's getting drafted like sixth to seventh round. So if he's playing sixteen games, I think he's a lock for like anywhere he's from the third quits. third to fifth round, depending what his preseason looks Smoking, like. Smoking, snorting, shooting, popping, token, sucking. He's got to quit doing those things, you know. All bad, right, bad for you. That's just bad for you out there. All right. You got Julian Edelman there, and once again, I think that's tremendous value. I don't think he's really going anywhere. Yeah. He's going to get Cooks has just plummeted his value. I mean, plummeted his ADP, I mean. and I, I don't think, think his value is the he's, same. He's no way he doesn't catch 90 balls. I think with Cooks on the field, I mean, I think he's just going to open it up more for Edelman on those 8 to 10 yard crossers and quick, and you know, out routes and quick slants and whatnots. And that. Oh, if you get, Ed, Brady's just going to eat him alive with it. Oh, yeah. If you get the safety, you know, cheating over to Cook's way for the deep threat, I mean, it's 
Edelman in single coverage is gonna <laughs> crush li- anyone over the linebackers middle. and nickelbacks and the like. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I know there's some lovers out there, no. and I I tend to lean more toward the love than the hate for this guy. How can How can but, it be true? I mean, Keenan Allen is oh. getting drafted consistent third round in every single mock draft that I've seen so far it's, this year. Why? That is insane to me. I don't understand what people are doing. Played less than a game last year. But they're dream weaving this guy. I know this is crazy. It. But this guy was, he played eight games. He was on pace for like 320 fantasy points that was, in PPR. That was a lifetime ago. <laughs> I mean, it was nearly in fantasy two years football. Ago. That was a lifetime ago. But I feel like there's still a lot of dreamers out there. We weren't even there. doing a show the last time Keenan Allen meant to dance. <laughs> I mean, he had, what, 67 catches and like 750 I'm yards you. for eight games. His body's giving up on him. I mean, he was bald when he was like 22. I mean, that's a bad deal. <laughs> He's got the Bichard Perriman effect. That's not a good situation for you. Your body's giving up. here. Stop growing hair. They're like, we got to use our resources elsewhere. We got to throw, you know, like the boat's going down. You got to throw some weight <laughs> off and they... I threw off the hair. I mean, I <laughs> I feel like I like this guy, but not where his ADP is. Like if no. I don't, there's no reason, no, no. there's no reason why this guy should be a third round. That's pick. ridiculous. But if he's, you know, like a fifth, how are you gonna draft? This is like I said earlier about D train. How are you gonna draft Keenan Allen over Demarius Thomas? I don't even like Demarius Thomas this year, but that is ridiculous. Are you gonna pass up a guaranteed ridiculous thousand yards? Absolutely gross. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I feel, draft Keenan Allen with Demarius Thomas. I'd feel a lot better if this guy was a fifth or sixth round pick, which he should be after playing, not playing. I mean, dude, this guy realistically you throw that game out. This guy hasn't been on the football he's, field in a year and a half he's, at least. He's Kevin White that's for some reason gets drafted in the third round. I'm not. I don't know why it's a thing. I don't know why people talk about it. I don't know why. <laughs> like I, <laughs> I hate him. I got the hate in my heart for him. Let's get into a little long list of some more either on the rise or some dead yeah. bums. So these guys aren't necessarily rankings. We're gonna kind of nah. talk to some even some teams together, but. I think leading off, this guy might as well be the next on the rankings, and that's Dante Moncrief. If he plays, this guy is touchdown deluxe for you out there. This is Andrew Luck's red zone man. Yeah, he's going, what, early 7th? I think I got him in early 7th, one of those mocks we did. Yeah, and I'm in love with it. I mean, if he can, you know the Colts are going to be throwing the football. And if he's on the field, I don't think there's any reason, shape, or form. I mean, my goodness. I mean, wide receiver three numbers, we're talking 12 teams, we're talking about wide receiver 25 through 36 here. And we are not talking guys that are producing good things. I mean, if there's no way he, <laughs> there's no way he can't be wide receiver 25 through 36 if he plays 30, if he plays uh, 16. 16 games, and I was saying he can easily sneak in to top I mean, I 15. Think I think he's going to be a mid wide receiver too if he plays over 12 games. Yeah, but I think he can get into that 15 to 20 range if he can get it. If he can get and for a seventh to eighth round pick, that's a tremendous that's pick with ceiling. some serious upside. Yeah, that's a ceiling about wide receiver 15 to 20. But I don't think there's any way, shape, or form he's not a wide receiver three. That's ridiculous. All right, and we're getting some Sammy Watkins, who, you know, plays for a team that's not really looking to throw the ball like the Colts we were talking about. I don't know. Watkins can't stay on the field. I was in love with him last year, and I've really gone sour on him. I don't know. I mean, he's another guy that his value isn't that crazy for how limited he's played. He's going about fourth round, like late fourth round, and really he hasn't done anything in his career. Anything worthwhile? I mean, he had that like six to seven game run at the end of 2015. It made you, you know, have delusions of grandeur out there. But I just don't know anymore with the guy, and I'm not in on it in that late fourth round average draft position. By any means, bringing in a rookie, Zay Jones for the Bills. Who knows? Zay Jones might be the guy to own in Buffalo in the receiving core. 
I guess I'd rather throw a dart at Zay Jones in like the 18th round than even think about touching yeah, the legs. So. Yeah, Zay Jones definitely in that 15 to 16, maybe yeah. even beyond range. Yeah, I don't even know really. I'm and just if, saying words. And if you're <laughs> and if you're gonna draft a bill, I think you'd rather take the Zay Jones or the Watkins. Once again, the fourth round is a steep price for a guy who you have no idea who's gonna who you're gonna get. We got some Titan wide receivers up next, and the and the waters just got even oh. muddier and darker. And they brought in this Eric might be crazy. Decker. This might be a hot take that I wish I regretted God. months down. But I think the Titan receiver is gonna have the most fantasy points this year. Is gonna be Eric Decker. Uh, that's I I, that, was, on it. that I felt can't. awful. I, I feel I I know that's a type of shit that goes down. I feel I like that's feel what's going to happen. I feel you on that at the end of the year. You're like, how'd that happen? And it did. But I just don't know. I just think this muddies the water is so deep. If you're looking at redraft, and it's, I mean, you're talking dynasty or keepers, you know, that's a little you different gotta story. Get, yeah, you got to get, you know, your boy out there, the rookie. But Yeah, you got to get some Corey Davis out there if you're going to be loving it sexy in those keeper leagues. But if you're not... I don't think there's any reason to touch any of these Titan wide receivers, and I even think it hurts Delaney Walker's stack. I mean, Eric Decker, like he's you said, slow. he's that red zone guy, and Delaney Walker's stock, I think, is going to take a hit because if they're doing three wide receiver sets, I think Eric Decker is going to be the guy that they throw in the slot, and he's going to be taken away from some of the Delaney. I mean, Rashard Matthews, I think, is going to get the hottest start out of the three of them. He's got some... You know, he's got some history with Mariota there, but I don't see him. I think Corey Davis late in the season will kind of turn it on, but I think Eric Decker could be a solid guy for you who somehow ends up having the most. Yeah, that's points. that like bullshit pick that the dude <laughs> in your league does, and you're like, everybody's all drunk, and they're like, what a fucking doucher. And then, you know, you like play a against him, and Eric Decker drops like a two touchdown game on your ass. And that's you going like, to happen. Oh, yeah, God. <laughs> you know it's true. It's gonna happen. It's happening. All right, Devonte Parker. We touched on a little bit earlier. I mean, you know, it is what it is. If yeah, you're in love you with know. him, if you're feeling it, the average was he's still getting seventh, eighth round. I think going on the eighth round, I think I scooped him up in one of those mocks I did. And if you're feeling it and you're a believer and you get to see him in preseason before you draft, and he goes out there and has a few nice, sexy uh, showstopper plays or does something that makes you. Make sure you uh, get a little chub or something. You know, rock the yeah, get a little, get a little halsey. <laughs> and then, you know, you can get a bottom, but I don't know. I'm a little bit afraid of it, especially that ADP. Yeah. All right, we're going to do the triple dump deluxe here with the Ravens. And for where Jeremy Macklin's going, I think he's the guy to get in this Baltimore offense. I know. I mean, he might be the best receiver since Anquan Bolden that Flacco's ever yeah. had. I mean, power of the year. I mean, Macklin's not really that old. He was hampered by injuries last year. I mean, Flacco, <laughs> I mean, you know, bring it up here talking about, oh, yes, and we're talking about Jeremy Macklin. Number one wide receiver for the Baltimore Ravens, and it's not like the Ravens are like a running football team. Because I mean, who's their number one back? Terrence West. I mean, my. I goodness, mean, they're saying Ravens. Danny Woodhead might be back for Week One oh, somehow. Oh, that, that muddy, dirty man's a muddy bum you city too. I mean, you we're got West, talking, you got we're Dixon, talking you got Woodhead. about the power of the urn and Jeremy Macklin. I mean, if you Chalk get him, it up. wide receiver two at the end of the year. What do you think? Oh. Top 24 Top wide receiver. 24, Macklin? I think so. Let's do it. I mean, we I mean Mike out Wallace the, flirted with that. We busted out the urn for it, right? I mean, we can do this, Jeremy Macklin. Let's fucking go, baby. I mean, they, like, they don't even have any tight ends in town. Yeah, it's a barren Pitta going away. It's a barren wasteland. And Jeremy Macklin has risen. <laughs> Diamond in the rough. And I oh, think no. more than Macklin yeah, hang out with it. <laughs> more than Macklin rising, I think Perriman falls. I mean Perriman was kind of the guy that you're thinking about, you know, throwing a dart late. I mean kind of was turning out at the end of the year, and now that with the signing, I think he's a guy who's gonna go borderline yeah. undrafted. And the dumps, I think, you know, Mike Wallace is what he is. 
I, I'm not really into that really either, but no. he, uh, he's not the type of guy that's going to win you fantasy leagues. No. That's not what's up with that. He uh, just happened to be a guy that was there that had to get thrown the ball to. Number, 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 blah, blah. <laughs> number. <laughs> Try again. Uh, another uh, awesome number one wide receiver. He's like oh. almost as good as the Bears' number one wide receiver. We're talking bad teams' number one guy. We're, out we're talking there. Quincy Anunua. We're talking Corey Coleman. Mm-hmm. And oh, I mean, Man. I don't think those are the type of dudes that are going to win you any money either. I mean, Coleman's I mean, even. Quincy had decent something or rather, but who is even throwing the rock there? What's happening, hey, dude? I feel like, I feel like, I mean, it's got to be the old trusty out there. You'd think he has to be the best guy on that roster. I mean, yeah. And there's no way they're starting. Dude, did you hear the reports? That dude hitting, hitting coaches reporter, hitting reporters. Cameramen hitting, like, and He's stuff. hit like five reporters. Hattenberg like, yeah. hitting reporters and oh cameramen on the sidelines. Ha- just hacking it up out there. Dude, yeah. There's like, no way you can, I like. That we, dude is that dude is bush fucking weak. Like weeks ago, I was like, throw Hackenberg out there. Jets, you're going to win one game anyway. Why not? See what you get. I mean, he he's might be Keanu too Reeves. embarrassing. He's Keanu Reeves on that movie. He's out there hacking, slashing football. It is not good. It isn't good. It's going to be an embarrassment. I the mean, Jets, I mean, I think they're going to go on 16. If they give them fucking Hackenberg, we could see riots in the street. <laughs> you mean we're talking cutting burning dolls in the parking fucking, lot? Fucking hanging back and burn dolls. <laughs> what has happened? I mean Quincy Nuno, I mean he's not getting any Bring love. Back Neil Donald. <laughs> and right and rightfully <laughs> so. I mean he's not getting any love and rightfully so, but I mean, he's the number one guy. What's the number two guy? Anderson, who came on late last year. Now he's getting in trouble with, like, pushing cops. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, just get, I'll, you know, I'll what throw a dart on a new one. He's it's, young enough. He's got some upside. I don't know. Don't Corey even, Coleman also kind of in trouble with the law and hamstrings out there. I'm not about them. I'm, I'm, not, he, that, I'm not about any Brown situation. I mean, maybe the, the Crow. All right, some John Ross. I mean, that's not a guy late round dart. I feel like John Ross could be this year's Will Fuller. I feel like he can. He's gonna get you some bombs out there, and maybe get you some twenty plus point weeks. He's also gonna get you some threes and fours. Oh. But I mean, who else is he competing with Did out you? there? I mean, it's AJ Green and it's Tyler Eifert, and then it's I mean, it's no one out there. They drafted him first round, and I'll tell you what. This guy obviously beat, like, the 40 best time, Chris Johnson. I was expecting to see a lot of just deep balls out there on film. This guy actually ran some good routes. Like, this guy is a lot more polished receiver than I was expecting coming from a speedster. So, I think John Ross could be a decent dart play. Yeah, and another guy, a dart play, some Juju. From Juju, and I mean, Pittsburgh. yeah, in Pittsburgh, and Martavis Bryant can't quit, you know, smoking, snorting, shooting, popping, toking, sucking, like we were talking about earlier. And I think you gotta, I think Juju, I mean, uh, hell, Sammy Coates is dead. <laughs> Marcus Wheaton, for some reason, is in fucking Chicago. Oh, My that fucking happened. God. Oh, God. Marcus Wheaton's in Chicago. Sammy Coates is fucking dead. And you, you know, got the slot guy is, 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 is Darius Hayward Bay still around? Fucking cement mm-hmm. hands, old, old block hands. I don't no know. No hands, brains. I, I don't know. They got the little slot guy there. Well, I can't even think. Why can't I think of his name? Who am I thinking of out there? Well, he means. Oh, no. Eli Rogers. Eli Rogers. Eli I mean, Rogers. he's there nothing. We go. Yeah, he's just a filler bum. He's a, he's a poor man's Jarvis Landry. I mean, he's, a, he's no one. I don't. He's see, absolutely no one. Seriously, he sucks. I don't. See, <laughs> I don't see why Juju can't he beat him sucks. out for the slot right no. here. If Juju and even if Martavis Bryant goes down, I mean that's. I mean, crazy. If Juju starts getting snaps. I mean, that's definitely worth the wait on fight. Another guy. Another rookie who's kind of falling out of favor with me is Mike Williams. I'm just not really sure. He's kind of turning into. The, Turning into some uh, Tom Treadwell situation. Drafted at what seven overall by the Chargers, uh, and I mean he's got some red zone 
potential, which I think definitely takes away from guys like Keenan Allen and Hunter Henry. And I mean, but that's about it. I mean, there's yeah. Tyrell Williams in there too, but I don't know. I just don't know how much I love on this guy. I feel like he's another guy who's going to be flirting with injuries. Yeah. Maybe another late round dart and throw some Will Fuller out there. What do you think about some Will Fuller? Will Fuller, I mean, showed a big he time showed, at the beginning he of the showed very nice flashes out there as a rookie. Once again, he hoped the quarterback plays better for the Texans. And he's going to be on the field every play. Yeah. And the quarterbacks plays better than Will Fuller. For a while, for about half the season, I think Will Fuller he's had like more forgotten. PPR points than Hopkins. He's going a little super And he's still late. going like 12th round, 12th, yeah. like 11th at least. Worth a dart out there. Maybe take over some sexy bye weeks. Maybe take over a flex play for you if you get some injuries or such. Yeah, we kind of talked about the Malcolm Mitchell out there. I think he kind of coming into his own there as a rookie. In the Cook England signing and did throw the serious brakes on the Malcolm Mitchell uh, bandwagon, though. Serious brakes were thrown. I mean, he is going to be the fourth option in the yeah. passing game. You're, nah, he's good a enough. guy that you're kind of hoping that injury frees him up. Which, I mean, Edelman and Gronk both have injury problems. So, But I think he's going to be a borderline undraftable guy. You're looking at three possible <laughs> late darts for the Jags oh. here. I mean, Alan Hearns, this guy had 10 touchdowns, 1,000 yards two years ago. We're talking the White Panther, Marquise Lee, who actually was probably the best receiver down the stretch last year for the Jacksonville Jaguars. And then they go out and draft D.D. Westbrook, who could have been a first-round pick, but has had trouble with the law and stuff like that. So, I mean, he's got the upside. He's got some... T.Y. Hilton in his film, but he's another guy who's flat out dart. See what you got. 18th round. Bailing it. Alright, so once again, that's the AFC. We're going to be hit you up on them NFC wide receivers. A good reminder here. Send us the message or an email if you want to get in that Tankers Fantasy Football Viewer League. Oh, you got to get in you there. Get that Tankers Hot merch out there if you win. Oh, we will give you the jersey. I mean, if you don't think of anything to put on the jersey, you know, we're going to have some other uh, jerseys for sale. And we're just going to run Sexy Boy on the back. Sexy Boy 11. Uh, 11 doesn't really mean nothing. We just kind of... That's kind of, I just kind of love that number, you know, he likes that number, you know, we love it. <laughs> Why not? Why well, fuck not? I love 11. Fuck 11, <laughs> baby. All right, once again, thank you much for watching. Subscribe to the YouTube channel there. We got Facebook, we got the Twitter. No one even does those anymore. Yeah. So. Um, just, we'd love to see you subscribe. We're trying like hell to get on iTunes. We're working on it. We we'll will, get the podcast we will, going. We will get iTunes. I think it's a, I think it's a new frontier that we need to uh, <laughs> conquer. Fucking Oregon Trail. We're Oregon Trailing our ass to iTunes. All right. We will see you next time. Thanks a lot for watching, guys.